Welcome to our video tutorial on finding peer-reviewed scholarly articles for Mr. Leet's Honors Biology classes. We're going to begin by going to our research guide, which you've learned how to do already. And as we discussed in class earlier this week, you want to make sure that you log into MacInvia first. This allows us to receive credit for our database usage, and it also allows you to bypass um, logging in with passwords both on campus and off campus. So to do that, you'll just go right here and it'll take you to Mac and Via. You'll log in with your Windows login. And once you're in, there's nothing else you have to do. You could filter the results by databases, but this gives you a really long list to scroll through. So we've gone through and pulled out the resources that will be best for this assignment and encourage you to just work off the links here as opposed to meandering through those uh, that long list of databases because many of those won't be relevant for this assignment. I'm going to start with Galileo Advanced Search, but all of the uh, tools and tips I'm going to show you will work for any of these databases because they're all published by a company called EBSCOhost. So the search interface and the search filters are identical. They just search a different cross-section of uh, journals. So the first uh, tool that we have for you, and this is a great starting point, is the Galileo Advanced Search. This actually is what we call a federated search because it searches multiple research libraries or databases for you. So instead of searching them individually like Environment Complete or Green File, this actually canvases quite a few uh, different databases. So I'm going to begin by typing in my search terms. So perhaps I'm interested in honeybee production in North America. So I'm going to try a Boolean search and combine my search terms uh, with the word and and see what I get. So I'm going to begin searching. And depending on the time of day, it may take just a few minutes to bring up the results. So right away, I see there are over 6,000 results. Obviously, that's uh, a lot. <laughs> so what we want to do is to use the search limiters on the far left side uh, of our toolbar to get to articles that we have the full text of, because obviously we need that. But we also are going to use the limiter tool for scholarly peer review journals. This is an easy and robust search limiter that will get you the very kinds of articles that your teacher expects you to use for this assignment. So let's go through and let's limit our results to full text. Obviously that takes it down a little bit. And now we're going to add additional limiter to find only scholarly or peer-reviewed journals. This means that these articles have been reviewed by other experts in the field to validate the research methodology and to make sure that the integrity of the research publication um, is strong uh, before it goes to press. It's a, a pretty rigorous process, so it gives you a little more confidence in the results of the research. And as you can see, this has narrowed the results. One other search filter that you might want to try is limiting by publication date. So you may want something more recent, maybe in the last five to ten years. And this will limit my results even a little bit more. And now I can begin scrolling through and seeing what might be of interest to me. And when you see something that you want to use, you just click on the hyperlink. We have all of our publication information here. We also have subject terms, which could actually lead you to additional searches. And we also have author supplied keywords that you can use for additional searching. These can be very powerful tools in initiating new searches. Um, and as you'll see in a minute, we could apply those same filters um, with that new search. Just a couple other things though to point out to you. Most of these articles are available um, as in full text as PDF, although occasionally you might see an HTML version at the bottom, but most of these are PDF. To open it, you'll just click on the PDF full text box, and you can scroll down and read it. 
You can also get a printer friendly version or you can even download it and put it on a flash drive or download it to your home directory and then maybe throw it into your Google Drive if you'd like to do that. Your toolbar over here on the right will also give you some powerful tools. You can go to permalink which looks like a paper clip to get the true link back to that article and you can again put that in a Google document or email it to yourself. To cite the source very easily and correctly you can use the export feature and you may or may not know we have a subscription to EasyBib and we'll be showing you how to sign up for that. But once you have created an EasyBib account and you have created a project or a folder for your citations and you're in your bibliography and have that open, then to add that source to your list, all you have to do is use that Export Manager tool and select Direct Export to EasyBib. And then you can save that and just press Import. And that will bring the full citation into your uh, EasyBib uh, uh, work, work cited page or bibliography manager so that's also super cool. When you're done looking at the article in PDF view you can just use the back arrow and you could continue to go back to your result list. Um, you could also refine your search and put some additional limiters on maybe you want to narrow the dates even a little bit more or you could go through and follow one of these subject terms or one of these keyword searches. So maybe I'm interested in pollination by bees. Maybe that gets a, a little bit more. And again, I'll want to go through and limit to full text and to scholarly or peer-reviewed journals because that's not a default setting. And as you can see, that's going to bring that down to even more specific results. And again, if you wanted to limit that, maybe I only want things from the last five or six years, then I could go through and limit the dates. And again, it's kind of a recursive process, but um, that's how search works in the databases. So it's kind of an ongoing process of skimming and scanning and discovery until you find something um, that hits with the area that you're interested in. We hope this video tutorial has been helpful for you in using the search limiters with full text and the scholarly peer-reviewed limiter, which um, is especially helpful for this assignment. We also hope that you enjoyed the peek at some of the other tools that are built in to this database. As I mentioned earlier, this will work the same for any of the Galileo tools because they're all published by EBSCOhost. And we encourage you to try each of them because the results will overlap a little bit, but you'll also get some different results. If you're searching for an individual database, this is one of the advantages of searching the databases individually versus a federated search, is that individually, you, as you start to search, you get suggested search terms. So maybe I'm interested in the honeybee population decline. And right away, that's a super um, limited uh, search filter. And again, I can tell it just to give me full text. And I can also limit it to my academic journals, which will give me the scholarly types of sources that I'm going to need. If you need any assistance or have questions, please see Ms. Hamilton or email her from the LibGuide for virtual um, and after hours assistance. Thank you.